There are quite a few AI video generation models to pick from on OpenHeart, and they keep adding more. So let's take a look at some of the newest and most popular models, use the same text prompt, and see how they do. We'll compare results from WAN 2.2, or maybe it's WAN 2.2, Cdance 1.0, Kling 2.1, and VO3. First, I'll show you some results, then we'll create a few AI videos together on OpenArt. That way you can see what the settings are for these different models. Many thanks to OpenArt for sponsoring this video. This fairly detailed prompt is going for a wild inventor working on a mechanical bird that springs to life and then some chaos and handheld camera action. Now for each of these, I'll show you the model used, any settings, and how many credits it costs to generate because there's a broad range across these four models. When the guy turns to the side, I think his whole workshop shifts and the bird that should be beside him is now in front of him, but it did such a good job with the dynamic handheld camera and making it chaotic, I'm not sure that's a problem. But overall, I really like the vibe of this one. Cdance made a usable clip. The camera went from fixed to handheld, but not nearly the chaos we got from WAN. And with Cdance, the storm scene through the skylight got a much bigger role than it probably should have. Kling, which has a habit of doing its own thing sometimes, went with an animation style and has the robot bird just fly right out through the completely open skylight as the inventor's just sort of like, yeah, okay. VO Fast has a lightning bolt coming through the window well into the shop and lingering for way too long. Everything would be burning right now if that happened. The bird takes off for a few seconds and the camera pulls back, but not much in the way of chaos here. And at a thousand credits, that VO clip costs 10 times what the WAN 2.2 clip cost. I definitely like the cheaper WAN version much better. Now we've got a guy stranded on the side of the road with his old broken down station wagon. WAN got the scene, what we wanted the guy to be doing, and the station wagon. The smoke or steam at the beginning came out a little weird, but it's probably not a deal breaker. Cdance said no station wagon, but it also has him putting his hand up to block his eyes from the sun, which is behind him, so that's different. Kling said no station wagon, and it put the car on the wrong side of the road. Well, at least as far as I'm concerned. I mean, maybe in some countries that's not the wrong side. Anyway, the shot doesn't really get close enough to show detail in the man's facial expression, but it could work. VO3 tried to be all cinematic with the shot not filling the frame, leaving those black strips at the top and bottom, and sort of the camera position in relation to the guy. Can't tell if it's a station wagon because we only see the front, and that's because it's got the car perpendicular to the road, which would be a really strange place to break down. All the models got the clothing right and set the scene in the desert, but I think I like the cheapest one, the WAN 2.2 version best. Now we've got a helicopter over a canyon. Maybe it's just me, but in the WAN version, it looks like the helicopter skids would be scraping that one rock as it goes over. I like that it tried to put some glare on the camera lens, but it looks like it might have been added in with Microsoft Paint. Cdance's helicopter looks weird to me, but I'm no helicopter expert, so maybe it's fine. Cdance did better with the lens glare and a great job with the sun reflecting off the helicopter. I can't tell if it's just the way the camera is moving or if this helicopter is flying backward. I didn't know those things had reverse, but maybe Kling knows something I don't. Nice lens glare, and the sun looks really cool when it first starts to come into the frame. VO3 Fast went with lighting and colors that don't give a lot of contrast for the helicopter to pop out, and that might be exactly what you want, unless it's not. But I'm not seeing anything that would make this clip unusable. The VO version seems like the best of this batch, although at a quarter of the cost, I might be okay with whatever's bugging me about Cdance's helicopter. Another very simple prompt to give the models some creative room, a woman walking down Main Street in a small town. The WAN version of this one, it just looks like the woman was photoshopped in. Maybe it's the strong backlight, I don't know. I'm also not used to seeing an asphalt sidewalk instead of concrete, and maybe she's walking in the road because she thinks that's weird too. Sea Dance gave us a woman on a mission. I don't know who she's looking for, but I don't want to be that guy. And she's strutting down the middle of the road, maybe because there's not enough room to get around the trees and the sidewalks. Kling has our subject walking down the middle of the road too, but rather than a small town, this kind of looks like an abandoned town that this woman just woke up in and is trying to figure out where she's at and what's going on. Here's the VO3 version with audio. Overall, that's a little more like what I had in mind. The gibberish lettering on the signs is annoying. Either make them completely illegible or get some reasonable text on there. 
Now this was normal mode in VO, so it was 2000 credits without the audio or 2500 credits with audio. I'm not impressed with some footsteps and generic outdoor ambient noise for 500 credits. VO came out the closest to what I had in mind, but it was 25 times the cost of WAN or 10 times the cost of C-Dance and six times the cost of Kling. That could cover a lot of rerolls with any of these other models and maybe dial in on something really good. Here we have a race car that's supposed to drift around a turn on a wet track. I don't know if it's the camera angle, but in WAN's generation, I don't see a hint of a turn until the very end and not much of a drift, if any. I do like the water spots on the lens though. C-Dance gets the turn or curve in the road and a more noticeable drift than WAN. Kling has what looks like smoke and not water coming up from the tires and it just seems to start randomly, so that's weird. But it does have the car go into the turn and do a little drift at the very end. VO has the camera going one way and the car spinning in another direction, and it made me dizzy trying to figure out whether it's keeping the layout of the track consistent. There's definitely a turn, a wet track, and some drifting going on, and I like that it packs a lot of dynamic action and camera work into a short amount of time. I like the fast pace of the VO version, but I think the C-Dance version did the best at delivering on the prompt, and at 250 credits versus 2,000 credits for the VO version. Next up is a time lapse of a storm rolling in over the city. WAN seems to have the sun shining through in places that aren't really lining up with the clearing in the clouds. It also feels a little bit bright and oversaturated for what we've got going on in this scene. C-Dance was a total fail on this one. That's not a storm moving on. That cloud is originating from the ground somewhere. Kling brought in the storm, but it kind of has it pass through real quick, and we were trying to get the storm approaching and arriving, not just flying through. VO starts off with a sunny day, and we see the clouds coming, then go to almost dark, so that works just fine. The problem is this one lightning bolt seems to be dragging across the whole city. It doesn't look like different streaks of lightning, but the same one sizzling for the duration. And I also don't like how it doesn't fill the frame, and then it does, like the black horizontal bars went away. Out of these, I guess I'd have to go with the first few seconds of the VO clip and then cut it when the lightning shows up. In this one, we're supposed to have a guy slam dunk a basketball at an outdoor court. Wan has the player holding the ball by the top before his other hand is underneath it. It gets a little jittery there. Then he shoots the ball, not a slam dunk, and the ball does some weird stuff like spinning like a top on one spot on the rim at the very end. C-Dance has the guy do a two-footed jump after a little hesitation. Then he goes up and he lets go of the ball, not really a dunk. And then the ball shoots out the front in a way that I'm pretty sure defies a few of Einstein's laws. For Kling, we won't even talk about whether the physics leading up to the shot or how he tries to dunk make any sense because the ball doesn't go through the hoop it just sits on the side of the rim, like that's a thing. Then when the guy lands at the end, it looks like the top of his head's only a few inches lower than the basketball rim, which would make him one very tall dude. Vio has the guy push the ball up in the air, and then as the ball comes down, he gets his hand on it again and pushes it through the hoop. But his arm magically passes through the metal rim and through one side of the net. As for the audio, well, the crowd cheering seems to be about 10,000 times the size of the crowd that we see there. So these were all bad. None of them captured a really good dunk, and they all have physics problems. I don't think I'd use any of these, maybe try to re-roll some of the less expensive models. Giddy up, we got some wild horses. Wan has the camera pulled back pretty far and tracks with the horses nicely and moves a bit. C-Dance starts off okay, we're closer to the herd and everything is nice and clear. But then there's a horse, he must be named Bob, bringing up the rear, shuffling along, not looking like the other horses and not running like them either. Kling's horse herd looks really good, as long as you don't look at their faces, especially the one in the front. I'm no horse expert, but I know that ain't right. In VO3, the camera moves from alongside the horses to behind them. I didn't think horses' tails stayed straight out like that when they were running, but again, I'm no horse expert. I'm going with the Sea Dance version for this round because I really like that odd fella bringing up the rear. Now we've got a commuter on a bike going down a tree-lined street with autumn leaves falling. Wan has the biker in the middle of the road, and that road has some weird lines and striping. I appreciate that it didn't overdo it with the falling leaves, but some of these just seem to randomly appear rather than fall from a tree or the sky or anything. Sea Dance looks good. It looks like this guy's going somewhere, like a commuter. Kling gave us something that might be a zombie. He seems to be slowly and methodically pedaling across the street, heading for the curb. 
I guess he's just gonna hop the sidewalk, go through the grass, and take the as the crow flies route. VO3 has someone on a bicycle on a tree-lined street in autumn with falling leaves, but this does not look like a commuter. It looks like a leisurely ride. And the audio, all I can figure is it must be coming from the cameraman and his shoes are soaking wet or something. The Sea Dance version got the closest out of this round. It felt like a commuter, no major weirdness. Now let's create some AI videos on open art. We're on the home page, logged in. Over on the menu on the left, click generate video. Now we're on the video generation page. Videos I've created are over here on the right. Over here on the left is our action area. We can generate a video from a text prompt. That's what we're gonna do. We'll come right back to that. We can also generate a video from an image element where you can give it multiple reference images and it'll incorporate all the elements from those images in your video. And then the audio tab lets you add things like background sounds or speech to your existing videos. We're gonna stay in text to video and the first thing we need to do is select a model. So right here, we'll click this drop down. We've got a bunch of models we can pick from and under each model name, it gives us a little bit of a description about that model. Let's start with WAN 2.2, I'll just click on it. Next, we need to give it a prompt. I'm gonna say a cook in a diner flipping burgers on a flat top grill. If you want a more detailed prompt, but like me, don't like writing those detailed prompts, you've got some options here under auto enhance. Now, if you just toggle this auto enhance on, that's gonna enhance the prompt after you click the generate button, so you won't get to see it or make any changes to it before it generates the video. But you've got some other options. Leave that toggle off over on the right next to auto enhance. Just click the drop down, and you can choose quick enhance. With that, the robots will enhance the prompt and they'll drop it here in the prompt box so that you can and see and make changes to it before you generate. You can also do customize prompt that lets you pick the color scheme and style and then enhance. I'm gonna stick with my simple prompt. Below that, we've got options for auto sound and auto speech. These are open art features. So it wouldn't be the model you selected like WAN 2.2 or whatever generating that sound or speech. Open art does it and brings it all together in your final result. We're gonna leave that off. Down under settings for WAN 2.2, we have the aspect ratio. I'm gonna stick with 16 by nine. For resolution, we've got 480 480p, 580p, and 720p, and then we can choose between a light mode or a pro mode. For WAN 2.2 in pro mode, regardless of resolution, whether it's 720, 580, or 480, it's 100 credits either way, so we might as well go with 720. For light mode, it's 75 credits, and that's for either 720p or 580p. So we're gonna go 720p and pro mode. Now we'll come down and click create. Since we've got that working, let's come back. We'll switch the model here and I'll pick C dance this time. We'll use the same prompt. I'm not gonna use the auto enhance sound or speech. I'm gonna come down here under the settings and our options for C dance are either light or pro. If we go light five seconds, 720p, that's a hundred credits for C dance. If we go light five seconds, 1080p, that's 175 credits. Light five seconds, 480p, 50 credits. Well, that's pretty cheap. If we switch to pro mode, five seconds, 480p is 75 credits, five seconds 1080p is 250 credits, or 10 seconds at 1080p is 500 credits. We're gonna go five seconds, stay in pro mode, and on 1080p for aspect ratio, we've got lots of options. I'm gonna stick with 16 by nine. We'll click create on that one. Come back up to where it says select model, and this time we'll come up and pick cling 2.1. I leave the prompt the same. I leave these settings off, and then not many options options to fool with on Kling 2.1. It's basically whether you want five seconds, that's 400 credits, or 10 seconds, which is 800 credits. I'm gonna stick with five seconds, and you'll notice a lot of these are limited time offer. There's like a regular price, and I guess they're on sale. For the aspect ratio, I'm gonna stick with 16 by nine. There are a few other options there, and then that's it. Unless we wanted to add a negative prompt, we'd click this plus button and type whatever we don't want in there. I'll go ahead and leave that out and just click create. Now, last but not least, come back to our select model dropdown. And right here, we'll select VO3. We're gonna use the same prompt. I'm not gonna do any enhancement. Now you notice the sound settings are not here for VO3. Remember, those are open art add-on sounds that would be here. But since VO3 is capable of producing its own audio, we don't have the open art add-on options there. Just below that, our options for VO3 are audio on or off. 
In fast mode, it's 1500 credits per generation with audio on. If we turn it off, it's 1000 credits. And that's whether we're at 720p or 1080p. And then for normal mode with VO3, it's 2000 credits without audio or 2500 credits with audio. We'll do VO3 normal mode. We'll leave the audio off and click create. The WAN 2.2 version starts off looking pretty good right up until a cheeseburger just materializes and shoots out from underneath that hamburger. And then the big spatula morphs into a smaller slotted spatula. But hey, the burgers look juicy. Here's the Sea Dance version. I have never seen a round grill like that before, nor do I understand why he would have his hand resting on it. And I'm not sure what these things that are supposed to be burgers are that he's moving around and they magically turn into something different. Yeah, I think that's a total fail there, Sea Dance. Here's what we got from Kling. Uh, okay, we're not really flipping. We just pick it up. We put it back down. We tap the spatula and then we do that all over again while we hold another one with a spatula there for a minute and then sit it down. All right, can VO3 pull it out? And then no, we turn two into one and then it sort of sticks to the spatula somehow and then falls off. This one, I guess, looks the most like a diner and the video is pretty good, except the part we asked for, which was the flipping burgers. In this video, we've only looked at four of the AI video generation models that are available on OpenArt. They have a lot more AI video generation models, both text to video and image to video. OpenArt also has a huge selection of image generation models, not to mention a bunch of great tools like chat to edit with flux context, ultimate upscale, one of my favorites that lets you pick from three different flavors of upscaling, a consistent characters feature, tons of tools in their editor, and a bunch of other stuff, way more than I could even cover in a single video. So if you're not already using OpenArt, check them out. The link is in the description. And again, thanks to OpenArt for sponsoring this video. Hey, my name is Bob. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, maybe click that subscribe button. And I hope you'll join me for another video real soon.